Welcome to another episode of the Friday Film Podcast. Today we have the visionary Nakai Matema. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having on me. On our podcast today. This ALZ Film Fellowship Podcast is brought to you by Accountability Lab Zimbabwe and Magamba Network. So the fellowship is just about giving young filmmakers in Zimbabwe from all provinces the opportunity to develop their skills and just really get into the responsibility of important and accountability in filmmaking and in our African storytelling. So Nakai, thank you so much for for being here. I'm so excited. I think I'm excited too. (laughs) (laughs) So I know that, you know, there's been a lot of change, a lot of shift going on with the Rona and, you know, the way Zim economy kind of works. And so you're doing a lot of underground thinking at the moment with how Ziff is going to move forward. Right. Yeah. And that's actually, yeah, correct way of putting it. It's very sort of underground thinking. Um, Just basically in in how we, going forward, how we actually have the festival, how it pans out in in a sort of a Mm -hmm. social distancing sort of manner, which is also really difficult for things like festivals where it's it's about people meeting and and exchanging together. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of... Definitely, there's no way that we're not going to have the festival and uh, like the festival's died. Um, but really trying to figure out how best to next do it. Um, whether it's online, online, definitely there'll be a very online sort of element to it. Yeah. Um, which in a way is also not necessarily a bad thing because especially like if we have films from international people, mm-hmm. you can have them, you know, participating sort of online. Um, and that's a definite, very definite sort of way to go forward. But also at the same time, there, has, there, sh- there will be elements, I think, of um, us kind of having sort of small sort of screening get-togethers and, and sort, of, sort of small social distancing um, meeting points where mm-hmm. people get come and talk, you know. Because also the thing as well, us being in Zimbabwe, we're not a lot of people actually have data and can actually right. go online. Yeah. Um, it's actually very a very elite sort of few. It's a lot of accessibility issues, right? It, because it, you it, want it online so more people can see it, but do more people actually have access to. Exactly. And it, especially like for the Zimbabwean population. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure, you know, for people outside the diasporans and, and even, you know, other sort of festival goes outside, but for the local Zimbabwean, even the local Zimbabwean filmmakers, that accessibility, that, exactly. yeah, they don't, they just don't have it. Um, and also, if you if you're screening a film, let's say like a feature film, which is like about 90 minutes, and then followed after by maybe a 30, 15 to 30 minute sort of yeah, question and answer not, session, it's just it's not, not feasible. It's not feasible. Yeah, and especially if you don't want to then ruin the, you know, the camera quality of what the, this person has produced exactly <clears throat> to, to, to get it on there and also the, a festival is actually supposed to be a platform to give you more views uh, to, for you to view to get your, your, your works reviewed and putting all that effort and everything and having just a limited number is just it's a bit mm-hmm. yeah so it's all of sort of a catch 22 <laughs> type thing but also as well I think also what we're also thinking about with the festival as well is having more sort of discussion based mm-hmm. sort of things because um, as I was saying that also we're trying to sort of change the focus of the festival to be more sort of Afrocentric um, in terms of just the kind of films that we have and the kind of conversations that we have where we're sort of like redefining our identity as Zimbabweans Yeah, I don't know if we're redefining we're creating our identity especially in terms of um, our film, our, 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 the aesthetics of our film and, and, yes. and the identity of our films. Um, because there's a lot of sort of Nollywood type things, but Nollywood is Nollywood. And we have to have a Zimbabwean aesthetic, I think. True. Um, there's very much like a South African aesthetic, you know. East Africa is also, but like, w- there's a lot of sort of underground <laughs> sort of... Not well-made Zimbabwean yeah. film that's but out there. It, it, you see it as well, like, even in the music, like, you'll hear, like, the reason why, like, Bollywood or Nollywood have had their success is that they've told their stories in their specific manner. Even if you see, like, a Korean, like, telenovela or something, it's right. told in their specific way. So exactly. So you to come and sing, like, a song in their accent or to you to come and try replicate 
the kind of storylines and the drama that they have right. and the way that they do them, it's not quite the authenticity that's needed for us to get exactly. our voice out there and to get the same kind of, um, I mean, however you define your success anyway, yeah. the same kind of success for us to get that. Exactly. And I'm glad you, like, you were talking about music, for example, which... I mean, there's great artists and everything in Zimbabwe, but like, okay, like the biggest sort of like Zim dance hall is not aesthetically a Zimbabwean sound. Yeah. It's, it's Caribbean, it's Jamaican. And, 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 and I'm not saying anything bad. I mean, nothing against what, what you know, some of these guys are, are doing. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing like, stuff. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. But it's not, it's not a Zimbabwean sort of... It's been Zimbabweanized, but right. the... the, the, yeah. the core element and whatnot even like the afrobeat there's a lot of people now doing lots of afrobeat which again they really do some great stuff and whatnot but there's no zimbabwean sort of aesthetic and there's it's not a zimbabwean identity yeah, it hasn't come out of our this there's like you can tell when there's songs that came out of our traditional sort of rhythms exactly and of instrumentation uh-huh. and then you have and that's the same thing that we need now with the films with the storytelling is our specific but also I will say sometimes I don't know depending on who you know as Zimbabwean storytellers right. I know a lot of people who you know like they go around the corner adding some spice so you can sometimes see that in the film yeah but also yeah and also but also but I think as well a lot of a lot of the problem I think a lot of Zimbabwean filmmakers do is we, we're telling American stories and converting them into Shona and you have there's certain films that I've seen where there's, there's gangsters riding around in like fancy cars and, and guns get pulled out where in yeah. Zimbabwe does it those things do not happen and they've been watching a lot of American films and if they do that's not exactly yes, how it happens how it there's happens. so many more elements that you're, you're Absolutely. missing out there's, there's, um, there's actually a TV series from Blowayo um, I think it won the the Nama Award for Best Drama. And it's about gangs and whatnot, based in Bulawayo. It's, I think it's called Mandla or something. Mm-hmm. And it's actually really good because it's yeah. authentic gang warfare in uh, Bulawayo, or, you yeah. know. And those kind of... Even, even like weird, like romantic comedies. Again, tell them, but tell them with a Zimbabwean... Exactly, because you don't want to take your audience out of it and go... Mm. Like, like, okay, but make e-papo. it a Zimbabwean kind exactly. of relationship. Exactly. And little... also the thing is, when you're telling your own authentic story in your way, because mm-hmm. also why are you competing with Hollywood? You can't, nobody can compete with Hollywood. Yeah. So, but you can compete with yourselves and also your films, more people, even internationally, are going to be more interested because they're like, oh, that's Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. That sort of thing. So this is also part of like with the festival, like what we're trying to do is have more conversations and also not not just necessarily with Zimbabweans but um, with black culture internationally so we have more Afrocentric more black centric films more black not just from the continent but also black stories from the diaspora Mm. Um, England um, the Americas the Caribbean South America where People, because there's a lot of actual films and filmmakers from mm-hmm. those different societies, which we'll never, we never see. You, true. And, and they're well digestible. I think the fear is well people di- think that it won't be digest enough if it's not similar enough to what they have. Yeah, exactly. But like um, with Flame that you did, it was, uh, was it 1996? Yeah. And it won a ton of awards yes. in all sorts of like, you know, France, everywhere. And those people don't know our story, but because it was something different and well done and well executed, a good story. It, it gets acclaim. Yeah. It gets acclaim. Yeah. Because also, it, it, yeah, the quality. It, we have to up our quality. Yeah. Because also the thing is, the quality and also the storytelling. I mean, one of the things that I'm really particularly interested in, what I, because I, I, I also work as a producer, and my main focus actually, particularly in Zimbabwe, is always on the script. Mm-hmm. Because... You have to have a script. Yeah. Um, and there's, I know there's, you know, different trains of thoughts that, that eh, we're, not, we're not Hollywood and we, why do we, we can't do Hollywood sort of filmmaking. It's not Hollywood. It's just how you make films. Yeah. <laughs> just have something good from the beginning. Start yes. on the right. Start from a solid base. Yes. Because this Hollywood template, that Hollywood template is how films are made. You have a script, you have pre-production, you have development. This is just how you make films. It's not Hollywood. It's how you make films. Yeah, and that's a good... 
thing to have. I, I don't know if we have enough people doing it. And also, it's not just enough people doing it. Even if we do, enough people who respect the fact that it needs to be done. Like, yes, the script is your baby and everything, and you've, you know, blood, sweat, and tears have gone into it. Respect the you craft. Need you need to respect the craft the, yeah. of what it is to make a film. Yeah. So that sort of thing. And all, uh, so this is also partly also why we also started the short film project, which is a project that the mm-hmm. trust runs as well, is just also mentoring uh, yes. people and mentoring young filmmakers and just helping them out, workshopping and that sort of thing. So just to up the level of your game. Yeah. Um, I think that's very, very important. important. And I think people also don't realize that starting from a good script, starting just in the beginning knowing exactly what you want to do it also cuts down in your production costs Absolutely. because you see a lot of stories being told in like a 15 episode season and every episode is an hour long or you know the film is has all these extra scenes and now it's like a three hour long film and it's like right. with had this been tighter writing you could have told your story in less time and had just everything needed to have forwarded the story absolutely the narrative and also and just tighter. and also just in terms of also the, those cutting the cost yeah make sure that you and also don't your script yeah mm. but, and also do not you can have 10 rewrites 10 drafts of your script because don't start anything until you got it's your script solid. is tight yeah and that doesn't mean that you don't have to change things after because think yeah it's a constant continuously evolving mm-hmm. sort of process but then once you've got your script also, the next thing also is pre-production. Because again, cutting your costs, pre-production. Yep. There's many, I've got the script, let's shoot tomorrow. It's like, huh? That's not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> a thing. <laughs> it's just not a thing. Like, what? Pre-production, getting the art department, getting your, your locations, your costume, the rehearsals as well. Bro, can, I don't know, in your experience, in my experience rehearsal in Z- Zimbabwean film is not really a concept. It's no, no. <laughs> but no one's had oh yeah, boys, mungo chai, my lines. But I don't want to be here all day yes. doing one scene. It's you not, don't yeah. have enough money to have this here all day. Uh-huh. You know, and it's extra cost that like, as Zimbabweans, you don't have, like maybe you're on a generator right. and now you have to buy extra fuel because you couldn't be bothered to tell 10 yes. people because yeah no you're quite right <laughs> rehearsals in 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 film is in zimbabwe is just not a, it's concept. Not a concept everyone is given a script go and learn your lines and then when you get on set you've learned your lines you're gonna say but like how are you interacting with your actor you know what really pisses me off yeah. also is somebody when somebody stops a scene because they're shocked that that's how the scene's happening because it's the first time they've read the scene and then you like stop the shot and then we have to start again because they're like ah oh, can't you like this is not this is not and professional also, behavior no because also all you've done actually is given them the script and they've had no motivation or nothing to read the script it's just like ah it's there and then they're reading the script when they're doing their, their particular scene and they're just just so that and they're like ah it's okay it's okay but I'm like you're it. saying it's, it's also like whoever's on the set the producer on the set are also not reining in that behavior exactly well. Exactly. So, and, and if they if there was enough pre-production, you would have known that the schedule. It's not just the shooting. It's the and this is something Titi stressed is that you know like eighty percent of a production or whatever is the pre-production. It is the pre-production, in, and then it's it's a mess. It and is. Things are always going to be a mess. Yeah. With because they actually the say that yeah they like, actually say that your pre if if your shoot is let's say four weeks your pre-production should be eight eight weeks. Uh huh. Like at least it's double. it's always double. It should be minimum, double, yeah. yeah, minimum double your your shoot period. So if you're having a ten day shoot or whatnot, <laughs> you need at least yeah. twenty. You probably need more, <laughs> but yeah. People start a bit on sets where, like, you get there and you're like, I attack to my, attack to my, and then they're like, okay, so come on, costumes. Pane end up next. I don't know my shop sense. My name got Zanos one, and you're like, oh, I feel like this even the done, whole, even the other time. thing as well. That also, I'm, I'm always like raising my eyebrow. The director or whatever will say to the actor, I just bring, bring, what, bring your clothes. I'm like, what? And it's like, and it's on actors you to shouldn't... actually go and buy extra things. And yes. can I just say, this actually saved my life though. This did save my life once because what? all they told the costume department, uh, to their credit, um, uh, the costume department was organized and had costumes for everyone. Right. All they told them was that, Kune extra non And I got there. And it was all boys' clothes. 
Oh. <laughs> in the, like, the entire walk. Like, she looked at me just so crestfallen. She's like, I don't know what you're expecting me to do. And I was like, no, no worries. I, I've got my Oh, own. okay. So it can, it can be handy. But like you're saying, it shouldn't be the responsibility of you know, of the actor, to, of the of the bring, talent. Yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be the responsibility of the talent. But even in that actually, why why was the, the costume person not told that you know it's a good Yes, and also even that you arrived there and she discovers your because you should have had fittings prior to that in the first place. Um, Simple things like that. <laughs> and it's things. actually it, because of some of a situation that happens like what you're saying and it's lucky because we all got there at like 6am and it was a very tight like two day schedule so right. had I not brought my own clothes because also at the time I wasn't like res- like independently mobile right. Right. so I was like now how am I going to get home and then chaga chaga everything and right. it's just it's simple things that just cut down and it makes the experience better for everybody because once somebody people on the set get that sort of mm-hmm. it'll drag your own production it down will. and why do you want that it yourself? will and also your crew also follows that same feeling whatever the mm. feeling that you exude on set the crew follows it as well yeah. you're actually beholden to the friggin crew <laughs> sometimes <True. laughs> sometimes because if they say Achadaga, like that's it that's it and if they take the lead because you can be a great director great visionary a great story but this is also the other thing about film it's collaborative you cannot make a film on your own at all it's that's just not possible so you have to it's also yeah that whole understanding how to get on with people and what have you because also this other thing this is another thing that people always have this idea that you know especially if you're if you're any kind of artist that you have to be crazy and difficult to get on and and that's <laughs> what, where you <laughs> flip the scarf places yes. people yes I, it's a, it's a it's a myth <laughs> because if you actually be and there are people who behave like that and get things done or not but generally like, you have to have right. people skills just be chill <laughs> you have to have people skills yeah and just be able to to communicate as well mm. Because a lot of stuff is in your head, so you have to be able to communicate. And see that actually what's in your head with the information that we can give to it physically Mm. via the cinematography and the costumes and everything. Will it actually come out in a way that is understandable to the consumer? Otherwise, I banish attributes. Which is also part of pre-production as well. Now, thinking off the top of my head, when I'm talking about pre-production, also like with the director meeting with all his HODs. Yes. Separately. This is what I'm trying... The camera... The, the DOP, you meet and you, you workshop your ideas ah. and how your, your vision, then with the art direction, the production designer and whatnot, again, the look of the film and everything, and this is what I want. Wardrobe, I want people, because also, as well, even this, there's this thing called a mood board, which I'm sure very few people who make films in Zimbabwe yeah. even know it exists. Yeah, yeah. But that's all part of pre-production and also part of you creating your vision Uh uh-huh even things like shot lists and storyboards and things like that so can we go to um (coughs) when you get there and they're like so we're just gonna shoot the script in order as it's happening and i'm like why are we moving the equipment six different times when we could have just had people learn their lines (laughs) shot it in a strategic logistical order and sort of things no I actually, there's actually yeah there's actually yeah some filmmaker last year actually we're shooting at one location mm-hmm. and then it was like okay so now we're leaving and we're going to go to this other location and myself and this other per- another person who was sort of they asked us there as sort of advisors and whatnot yeah. we were like but You've got three scenes in this same location. So why... We just assume that you're shooting all three here. And it was like, no, but you can't shoot a film like that. You have to shoot a film in order. And we were like, so who, told you, who told you that very few films are ever shot in you know, order? People take like two years shooting a film. Do you yes. think it was so they went to Malta and then they toddled all the way back Because the to next, the next scene was in Malta and then the other scene was in London. <laughs> so we stopped like, what? And we can't, we were really like, nobody ever, that's not, it's, it's, that's literally, it's literally the opposite, like who, who, and I think that speaks to what you're saying about like, 
we we don't know these things and like sometimes you you find it difficult in your like drama tag your script consulting it's right. because I feel like there's just so much struggle to get things done in Zim like by no fault of our own yeah. so when you finally get something done you're really like blood sweat and tears at that stage absolutely like ragged and uh, you you've had to fight so much to protect mm. what you have so it can be difficult mm. to have then an external person at Chungo Woods Road ah up up day one go yeah and then now it looks like as we're so used to somebody trying to take away your agency somebody trying to take something from you yeah but then like you're saying you can't do it by yourself you, you can't no film open. is very collaborative but it's, it's hard because there's a lot of you know backbiting and whatever all else yeah. going on but yeah just industry industry standard. and also especially like what you said that it, Zimbabwe is just hard in general yeah. um, across the board because of various things and you know whatever, so societal sort of things and whatnot. Yeah. So also, which is also, I think, important why we need to lean on each other and also mm-hmm. just not be so precious about... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I always, I really genuinely, I, anybody who wants to ask me a question, who wants my help and anything, mm-hmm. um, filmmakers and what, I am actually an open book. Um, yeah. And I'm really always helpful. there. A lot of people take me up on it. A lot of people decide, eh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. because, you know, I tell people facts. Yeah. I try to be gentle. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. So, you know, I, you know, I get a lot of people who say, eh, okay, I, I mean, I don't get, a, I don't get that at you, Hollywood. And it's like, I, but it's not it's just a standard it's just, just why the don't stand- you want nice things Ex- no but also it's you respect the craft this is the mm-hmm. craft this is how you do it yeah it's like when you make a, an outfit or whatnot until you start off with a pattern yeah you start off with a drawing first guy, and then you or, 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 or not even necessarily a drawing or, or a picture or something you say I want this is what I want and then until a pattern needs to be cut yeah. And then the, the material has to be found. And the, so no. same thing with film. Film has got layers. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that people will try to act try to act like, oh, it's a budget issue or like it's a typical Zimbabwean problem. We aren't able to do X, Y. And it's like, no, but like some of it just takes some sitting, just sit down, take 30 minutes to sit down yeah. and think through some of these things. Exactly. Like you're saying, a lot of these problems, it's a collaborative effort. A lot of these problems could have been solved by yeah. getting more people yeah. in on the, and not in a sort of forceful way halfway through yeah. to make it seem like it's everybody's responsibility, exactly. but yeah. just, you know. Because even even just that phrase, could, it's not budget, it's not budget. You had some budget because you made, because you there's no way you can make anything without anything. But, so you had money. Albeit small or, or, or lo- large, but mm-hmm. you had some sort of money. And a lot of these problems that people, the story, the script, okay, and it then you say, take any you, money. yeah, and then you say, it's not budget. We had no budget. And it's like, could have texted Nakai for free, should have told you. You know. Should have been told you. You know. I, I, and just that whole concept that the minute a film comes out and people point out that, it's not budget cut. And it's like, yeah. No. And the fact that you even had a camera and then, for example, you, <laughs> each shot is like, the, the, yeah, the, 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 this shot is bright and this shot, shot is too dark and whatnot. <laughs> and then you say it's about budget. No, you just don't know how to but film. the sun is free. <laughs> exactly. Is you just free. don't know how to, to make film, to use a camera. Uh. So you, can, you cannot say that because this shot, is, and then also uh, huh, sound, sound also is a major yes. problem. People always seem to ignore the sound. So some levels are high, some levels are down, and then people love to put music that they haven't paid for on top of a, <laughs> on top of a, on top of a whole conversation and you're, you're struggling <laughs> to hear. And it's just, yeah, I, it's just that you don't know how to edit and you don't know exactly. the importance of editing. So it's got nothing to do with budget. Because even if you don't have the equipment, whatever equipment you do have, use it in a consistent manner. Right. Yes. So your shots are the same. Exactly. And and I think also what the editing problem comes in as well is not enough people respect editing as a as a separate thing. We yes. had Lindy last week and she's you know, her niche is editing. Right. And so too many times it's the person who was on the camera or the person who was directing is now 
going home to edit. And that's great in a lot of places because like, yeah. you do want to shoot with like an, thinking about your editing in the back of the yeah. head. But when it's the same person, I want to run it because mm-hmm. there's not enough like delineation of mm. roles. Mm. And then now they're just sort of letting things slide. And like you say, sound just... Whoosh, yeah, sound. Have a lot of great sound people. people yeah, people in, have a music big and stuff. tendency of just ignoring sound. Yeah, but we don't. And have even enough. shooting on set, yes. people even forget about micing people up. And what I know of a very specific. Uh, <laughs> actually, it was actually one of the short films uh, yeah. that we did, and I was watching the footage backwards and whatnot, and and then I was like, "But where's the sound in the scene?" And then everybody was like, "Oh, damn, we forgot." And I was like. <laughs> and it was a it was <laughs> it was a bit of a wide sort of uh you know crowded scene but there was actual there was actually some a very important piece of dialogue that actually sort of rounded up concluded the entire story that happened between the two central characters so in my the mis- question is pamgachi camera rolling we were sound paga daira kuti rolling anga shidaira kuti kudi and what was rolling? I don't know. Because also <laughs> that particular, it ha- so happened that that particular, I wasn't actually even on set. And also, <laughs> it wasn't like we shot it down the road. Eh? Yeah. It was like oh glashes. No. Oh so there was no, no going back. Jesus there was no right going yeah. back. And it was like, huh? And it was like, no, uh, oh, damn, we forgot. And it was like, hey, okay. And it kind of, we ended up just working with it and just sort of, you know, whatever. And that, yeah. that specific, those lines just never ended up happening because the film sort of, it concluded sort of well, but it was kind of like, what do you mean? You, you forgot. And then also, then I even, I, I asked the sound guy that like, cool dude. And he was like, ah, I had to be, and it was just like, yeah, okay, you know what? I'm yeah. just too weak. I, and that's the importance of like, the importance of, you have your pre-production, um, you know, structures and everything. But during pre-production, think of your, during production protocols and structures so exactly. that things like this don't ha- if you have to check it 600 times check it 600, 600 times, times during the thing because yeah. things like this happen yeah and the more mistake like mistakes beget mistakes yes and also i'm glad you even <laughs> say that also because i don't people need to understand that with even with working in these templates and, and these sort of structures and whatnot mm. mistakes will always happen but it's you just to yeah it's, mm. they're gonna happen but just know how to... <laughs> and have a protocol in place to move past it and sort of just make sure... Yeah, exactly. It's been taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of things, now it's messing up with your continuity, it's messing up with your... Continuity? <laughs> what is that? There's an actual continuity <laughs> person on the set where it's just sort of... <laughs> but also, this is even... But, but even that whole... Hmm, there's a film... Hmm, anyway. But... <laughs> Because <laughs> of those clothes, there's a film that I watched towards the end of the year, and this person, who's actually supposed to be like a big sort shop business type gangster whatnot, yeah. And in one scene, he's wearing the T-shirt that the main lead character was wearing a oh, couple no. of scenes back. He's wearing that same T-shirt, but it's turned inside out. <laughs> I just. And also, I kept on watching because I, I actually kept on seeing the tag at the back of the guy's head. And I was trying to figure out that why, didn't, why couldn't they put the tag back inside his... Until I realized that, oh no, the tag is, is in its right side. Yes. And then I looked and then because then I asked the person next to me that like, that t-shirt, there's something. And then he was like, yeah, but because it was the, the t-shirt that the other characters... Were, I was just like... And also... The the person who was who was actually wearing that back to front inside out T shirt mm. is the he's supposed to be a big shot, and it's like huh, which also then also even actually, even the responsibility of actors in Zimbabwe, acting also is a profession, and an actor should be able to have to embody his character. So even the actor himself should have been able to say this is not. I cannot wear this because yeah. it doesn't go with my character. Yeah. With my, it's just not. Because even I'm, I'm, yeah. Actually, I think also acting in Zimbabwe also needs to be taken as a serious. For um, sure. Like a, if the director hasn't given you rehearsals, you yourself should know that it's gonna be my face on this. 
So I should do the best of my ability and be responsible for the production to come out well. Having said that, I am going to admit, I did want to say, I thought about it while you're talking that, because I, yeah, I was expecting to get there. I'm like, well, the shot list and everything. So I know because, you know, I I, I get very physically uncomfortable in a lot of different situations Mm. that are supposed to be normal. So I'm like, it's okay for me. I'll just sort myself out. Right. Am I okay now? And they said yes. And then there wasn't a shot list. So they had to go back to previous something, something, something had happened. Somebody was recording sound, somebody... You know, and um, <clears throat> I had just removed like half my costume mm-hmm. and worn my <laughs> and we didn't notice until now it was airing. People were like, yeah, what's going on, babe? Oh, <laughs> really? What are you doing? And I was like, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. But that shouldn't have to. That shouldn't have to happen if everything. But you see, also the thing is, that I think you've got a little bit of some sort of training in terms of acting and and performance and whatnot. But there's not enough for film, hey. Yeah, because it's different. Because and also what ends up happening is a lot of um, the films and what have you that happen is people's friends and connections and whatnot who are not necessarily film or not necessarily actors and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it's like you know somebody bumps into somebody and decides you you actually can be a really good yeah. and that you should act in you know come and uh, perform in my film and what. Yeah. So and then th- those people over time get cast in other things and get cast in other things and get cast in other things. But what ends up happening is that you, you're setting a precedent of non-professional actors because then, uh-huh. then they then they will say, yeah, but I'm an actor. I'm I'm actually known. A lot of them, a lot, dra- of, the, a lot yes. of drama, TV dramas. A lot of those actors who are known, who everybody, you know, they can't walk down the street and whatnot. But they're not actually actors. Be, yeah. But then they've been in so many things with given no guidance. The, and it's not that the talent's not there. Yeah, the, the, exactly. The, no, the talent. Like behind the, talent, the yes. scenes, there's a, just a certain way that things were supposed to have been conducted actually, yeah. for the production to have just been the best it could yeah. have been. And actually, I think actually there is a lot of talent in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. but it just needs to be professionalized. There's, nobody's doing this. And it's nice that like we've got the fellowship just sort of trying to do that. And like the that, mentors yeah, I wanted to coming say, yeah. in and just sort of teaching people like, okay, you guys are great at X, Y, Z, but did you know there's also X, like ABC that you need to mm-hmm. think about? And it's mm-hmm. important because just generally, actually, a lot of our industries, there's not a lot of professionals feeding back into the net. And because of, um, because of just the situation, there's a lot of like, you cut corners at each stage. All the time. By the time. time it gets like, you know. And like then it becomes a norm. Me, yeah, and then like, it becomes the norm. Because I mean, like even a lot of the, the some of the big name actors in Zimbabwe, I don't know if they even know how to actually read a script properly and how how mm. how you ask them to break down their character and who is your character and things like that. It's like what simple things like getting the pace of the line, where are the beats, where exactly. Is the, like, you know, and the also, if they just it. had that guidance and and also working with with a director or whatever, uh, who who actually gave them who that knows? guidance, yeah, that would I think that would change. A lot of things because the talent and the raw, the raw talent, and the raw gift, I think is is there. Yeah. But they just need to be pushed to the next level there. Yeah. yeah. So, just we just need to professionalize everything. Yeah. Film, film production in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So I know you do that. Like personally, you've said you are open to people like shooting you a text and like you sit down and you work through their script with them or whatever. And I know for one of the short film competitions you had when a lot of people just didn't really quite get the theme. They just wanted like stuff in whatever they wanted to say mm. and just submit it. And you even had to like postpone the deadline because yeah. people were not. That was so, actually the smart sh- smartphone short film competition. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because people, uh, and the theme, that was our inaugural smartphone short film competition. And the theme was being Zimbabwean, mm-hmm. which is very open to all sorts of interpretation. Yeah, so it's like, how do you miss that mark if it's so <laughs> open? Yeah. But then f- film, I mean, we were getting like, I don't know, just straightforward drama things. And it's like, but how is this being Zimbabwean? Yeah. And also because we had people doing poems, we had people doing dance sort of things. And, and, and it's a very open sort of, it's very broad theme mm-hmm. because what does being Zimbabwe mean to you? Yeah. But yeah. And then, yeah. So we had a deadline and then realized that like, we don't have, yeah, we had to, I think we postponed it for about a whole month or something. Mm-hmm. Um, to get more and more yeah. sort of... Um, so that's an important thing for people to do. Like, ex- it's okay to extend a deadline. Oh, yes. To, to just make sure that things done get done well. But also, like you're saying, doing these skills, um, 
developing these skills and having these conversations so that's something to even incorporate into like how you're moving forward with the with the festival and like the other work you do um having discussions at the end of things just people talking more in a collaborative space yeah and then that also takes the pressure off of um everything has to be done in one thing so also yes. continuing a big thing is like the festival's all fun and great but how do you continue the conversation yes do it have people constantly thinking about these things not just once a year or once every two years because this is actually happens. something that we've been thinking about in our underground thoughts as you said mm. um is also just also keeping the presence of, of 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 the festival life throughout the year yeah because having this sort of one-off type of event is great it's fun and everybody comes to meet and everything that's that's great but also one of the also ideas that we we're sort of toying around with and, and trying to figure out is also like every last Friday or every last weekend have either either it can be something as simple as just a screening mm-hmm. of a film and then people talk afterwards and t- discuss yeah. the film maybe have a little drink up type thing or whatnot or have a conversation uh, like a workshop a talk a discussion seminar type thing yeah. so trying to keep that also every at the end of every sort of month or every after every two months or something yeah. what i mean a start off <laughs> start off sort of after every two weeks and yeah. every two months and then maybe gradually it become can become like a every friday type thing and eventually it's important. Yeah. i mean i can't speak for like the film industry outside of zim but i know just um within within theatre or actually even when in TV that's fully a thing uh, like in Hollywood or something like I don't know Game of Thrones like from the pilot that they shot and then screened to like some f- small family and friends is completely different to the show that we had and that's an important stage like yeah. you're saying that collaboration like a of getting the objective type, yeah. and yeah. your actual consumers opinions on what worked and what didn't mm. and you know in theatre you can do like a staged reading of your play before you and then yes. you go back and then you rework it yeah. for when it finally then gets staged and that's we don't have one we don't have enough of that and two even once the thing is out we just like you're saying we don't have enough screenings people just don't have access and to also the work. thing is as well like what we were saying is that also the the clicks and 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 of people who who, who go to theater there are people uh-huh. who go to, go to, to festivals there are people who go to music and even music there are people who go to japrese and that's all they do. And they're the people who go to Makomba. It's and a they, lot of different spokes of a wheel that exactly. never get to sort of like, yes, they don't they never interact. mix and mesh. Yeah, they never yeah. sort of interact. And I think we, that's also something that I think we just have to kind of start breaking that kind of mentality. Mm. I'm not 100% sure how, but yeah. it's something that I, I constantly keep thinking about. And I think everybody should think about because yeah. um, it's just so, people just stick to what they know. Yeah. And and there's not a lot of cross pollination type thing. There really thing. isn't. And I do think also part of it is also the perception of people. There's a lot of them and us. Yes. You have North Samora, South Samora, you have Matibele versus Shana. Yes. And not to say that those feelings aren't coming from a very valid place. Where Absolutely. They, and in some cases it's it's proper like systemic division between yeah. people. Mm. But as you as an individual, there's mm. no need for you to say, ah, and screen that quack because Kuneva and Wakati or Vaningwa Stashi. Because what's all what I always find so hypocritical, I would think that those arguments are valid, but you watch the Hollywood version of what someone on the either end of Samora was doing. So why now when it's in, in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe you exactly. and you're saying exactly. no, that's true, but but you loved it when yes. somebody when, some, when, like, when, so well, why, someone, you, yeah. why is there why are you saving the sort of like um vitriol and yes sort of, for some hatred, for your own yeah, person, for, your, for own, your own country, your own people and yeah. Make sense. So yeah, just breaching that having more having more screenings or something having these opportunities and also yeah i mean we also i mean the festival used to we used to do sort of these outreach screenings where we would go to uh Nsodzi hall in Mbare and what all these mm. sort of i i think those are also very important and young okay, africa in uh, chitungwiza and that kind of stuff and then also not we wouldn't just there was a time we didn't just have screenings we would also because we had to have international guests and stuff, uh, Christian Neps from America and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We would take them also to those places and yeah. have them conduct workshops That's in important. those sort of areas as well. So, and also just to get the general sort of public to mm. to also start engaging and watching films. Or, I mean, there's so many, a lot of Zimbabwe films that the majority of Zimbabweans have never watched. We really and it's not, uh, And it's not necessarily that they don't, they wouldn't if they if, if they, they could. Yeah, but they just don't know they about just, them. They just, you know, yeah. 
So they just don't know that they're there. This has been great. Right. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this has been the Friday Film Podcast, a collaboration between Accountability Lab Zimbabwe and Magamba Network as part of the ALZ Film Fellowship. Thank you so much and we'll see you for our next episode.